Hello everyone, I'm Elizabeth and today I'll be arguing for the affirmative side on marijuana legalization. And so first I'd like to start off with rebutting um, his claims. So um, he brought up he brought up DUI um, information on uh, medical mar on mar marijuana accidents and how DUIs might increase um, and stuff about impairment. So marijuana facts for teens um, by the National Institutes of Health states evidence does not support the notion that even heavy long-term marijuana use by adults permanently impairs memory or other cognitive functions. Regarding DUIs, um, the same source states, in driving studies, marijuana produces little or no car handling impairment, consistently less than produced by moderate doses of alcohol and many legal medications. Um, surveys of fatally injured drivers show that when THC is detected in the blood, alcohol is often detected as well. <clears throat> Regarding his gateway drug claim, um, the same source states, evidence from jurisdictions that have reduced penalties show no increase in marijuana or other drug use. The Institute of Medicine concluded that there is little evidence of decriminalization of marijuana use necessarily leads to a substantial increase in marijuana use. Um, most people who try marijuana never go on to use any other illegal drug. And the vast majority of those who do try another drug um, don't become dependent on it or go on to have associated problems. Indeed, for the large majority of people, marijuana is an endpoint in drug use rather than a so-called gateway drug. The new evidence suggests that marijuana can even serve as an exit drug, helping people to reduce or eliminate their use of harmful drugs such as opiates or alcohol by easing withdrawal symptoms. <clears throat> Um, next, he stated that if taxes go over 30%, if I'm correct, um, then it will increase um, the black market. But Prop 64 only has a 15% on tax, um, and it has no tax on medical marijuana. Mm. They also stated, um, also regarding that marijuana is addictive, um, <clears throat> the TV True Network, Ad Ruins Everything, the Sinister Reason Weed is Illegal, stated that substance abuse and medical, mental health services administration um, stated that most people who try marijuana don't even continue smoking it. <clears throat> regarding their, um, claim that it will influence children and let them know that marijuana is um, good to use because we're legalizing it. <clears throat> 10 facts about marijuana by the Drug Policy Alliance claims that when it comes to use by young people, several recent reports have found that in the majority of states that have approved medical marijuana, of use among teenagers have actually decreased. Experts say this is due to diminished forbidden fruit effect and decreased access to marijuana as it moves from the unregulated streets where there are no age requirements to inside licensed dispensaries where you need to be 21 and older to purchase marijuana, just like Prop 64 states. Um, <clears throat> regarding that it is addictive, once more, um, out of rooms, everything, the sinister reason weed is legal, cites um, the substance abuse and mental health um, services administration. Most people who try marijuana don't even continue smoking it. Okay, so regarding their claim that there are no medical benefits to marijuana, <clears throat> there are medical benefits to marijuana and by decriminalizing it, it will make prescribing marijuana for medical purposes far easier. <clears throat> Marijuana Facts for Teens by the Drug Policy Alliance once again states, for many seriously ill people, medical marijuana is the only medicine that relieves pain and suffering or treats symptoms of their medical condition without debilitating side effects. They said that yes, there are um, current medications that treat stuff like this, but some people may have problems with those medications such as allergies or maybe even addiction. 
<clears throat> Other medical benefits. Um, for some people, marijuana can alleviate symptoms of a wide range of debilitating medical conditions, including cancer, HIV, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, and Crohn's disease. It can act as a safer and more effective alternative to narcotic painkillers, as I previously stated. Um, it can treat severe pain. It reduces nausea induced by cancer <coughs> chemotherapy. It stimulates appetite in AIDS patients. <clears throat> it can reduce um, pressure in people with glaucoma. It can reduce muscle spastic spasticity in patients with neurological disorders. And it can help some people manage health conditions, particularly P PTSD. <clears throat> um, medical marijuana, 10 health benefits that, le that legitimize legalization states um, regarding Alzheimer's disease, the active ingredient in marijuana can prevent an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase from accelerating the formation of Alzheimer's plaques, plaques in the brain, as well as protein clumps that can inhibit cognition and memory more effectively than commercially market drugs. Regarding arthritis, marijuana proves useful for many stereotypes of chronic pain conditions, but patients with rheumatoid arthritis report less pain, reduced inflammation, and more sleep. Regarding morning sickness, in a peer-reviewed study, researchers at the British Columbia Compassion Soci Club Society found that 92% of women found marijuana's effective effect on morning sickness symptoms as, very, as either very effective or effective. And regarding glaucoma, since the 1970s, studies have called medical marijuana an effective treatment against glaucoma, one of the, reading, one of the leading causes of blindness in the world. Researchers say marijuana helps reduce and relieve the intro the intraocular pressure that causes optic nerve damage, <clears throat> but proponents say it also helps reverse deterioration too. <clears throat> this all, once again, comes from medical marijuana, 10 health benefits that legitimize legalization. Thank you.